Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. Greetings, Mr. and Mrs. Middle America and all the ships at sea. This is Coast to Coast AM. My name is Ian Punnett. Coming up this hour, our old friend Dave Schrader returns. I, I, I talk to Dave regularly. Somehow in the months between when we last spoke and tonight, he shot an entire new TV show. <laughs> and it sounds fascinating. And he'll tell you about that next on Coast to Coast AM. This is Ian Punnett. You know... I turn around for two minutes, and you shoot an entire new TV series, Dave Schrader. How did that happen? happens in between those moments we pay attention. You know that, Ian. It wasn't that long ago that we were talking. I had no idea you were shooting this. This is so funny. Uh, you're, you've, you've been involved in teams of investigations many times, and we've had you on recently right. with all your projects, and it's cool. This one's Really intriguing, and I wish I'd had a chance to to see some of, more of it. I will look forward to catching it on the Travel Channel coming up. But you you were involved in an investigation uh, on the ghosts of Devil's Perch in Butte, Montana. How did I mean that sounds like I disparate things coming together for the first time? Well, what's really kind of nice. This is actually a bit of a returning series. It's kind of an anthology. The First two seasons were a show called Ghosts of Shepherdstown, right? And starred Nick Graw from the Ghost Adventures and Elizabeth right. Saint, and and they were dealing with these spirits in a town called Shepherdstown. The mayor and police chief had actually um, reached out and got Nick involved. Uh, season three was Ghosts of Morgan City, and then uh, that was in Morgan City, Louisiana, uh, with Ben okay. Hansen, Sarah Lemos, Katie Stafford, Jeremy Leonard. And uh, they were out there dealing with very similar problems out in, in uh, Louisiana. And then this pandemic hit. I don't know if you heard about it, if you guys talked yeah. about it on the show, but that <laughs> hit. Uh, shut yeah. things down for a little bit. And then uh, they decided to um, go back because there are quite a few towns around the United States dealing with kind of a supernatural uptick. And uh, we were called into Butte, huh. Montana. So Cindy Kaza, the medium, who I worked with on Holzer Files for 23 episodes. Uh, yeah, I recognized her immediately. Yeah, yeah. she she joins me, and uh, we go out there and we connect with K.D. Stafford. He's They call him the mad scientist of the paranormal because he builds really amazing contraptions and engineers these pieces of equipment to try to help us bridge the gap. So not only is Cindy picking up on things psychically, but we're able to help kind of corroborate that with some of the equipment that he's created. And we get these voices and, and visages and and uh, imagery that we're able to actually collect in the moment while we're doing these live investigations. The the show, again, is called Ghosts of Devil's Perch. Now, I go back to something I've you and I have talked about before. So tell sure. me how this is different or better that somehow, and I think this is, it, it makes for great, media really good tv but how is it that this guy has invented these devices that that are able to capture something that other people can't find don't experience even though they're in the same room and it happens just in time for tv cameras to show up what does he come up with that's different that we can look at this and go okay this is the real deal well, and that's a great question, because when you're dealing with the paranormal, obviously you've already got enough of the skeptical side looking at you, wanting to understand and break down the things that you're doing. Katie right. is an Iraqi and Afghani war vet, and he's got a knack for, for electronics and building and engineering. So he does um, what many others in the field have done in the past. They they hear the theories, the ideas, the concepts of what is happening and haunting, where EVP, electronic voice phenomena, or visual um, spectrums for spirits might lie, and then he tries to create equipment around it that, depending on the type of activity that's taking place in the location, uh, be it poltergeist activity, residual hauntings, live um, kind of um, intelligent hauntings, 
he just kind of tries to, you know, find something that might be able to tap into that element of what we're there for. Uh, and, of course, not everything works all the time, and we don't get evidence on maybe one piece of equipment, but, you know, the tried and true recorder p- picks up some amazing voice phenomenon. We were able to almost carry on a one-on-one conversation with the spirit realm. Um, and this season was exciting for me because coming off of two seasons of the Holzer Files where we, right. you know, Cindy Kaze and myself and Shane Pittman were kind of walking in the long shadow of Dr. Hans Holzer, one of America's premier ghost hunters. A uh, guy wrote over 145 books on just about every element of the paranormal from witches to psychic phenomena to ghosts and you know haunted and possessed possessions. And uh, we got to do this in a really great historic route. And that's what drew me in for the new series is I really love the concept that we're going to go to Butte, Montana, which is steeped in history. We get to hear what's going on. And then you've got all of this perfect template already there. And, you know, you've got high quartz and limestone and copper and precious minerals, underground water springs. So there's a lot there. And then bringing somebody like KD Stafford in, who's then able to kind of try to trick out some of these areas to, to try some new experiments, to see if we can facilitate something. I'm all for it. I love the concept of trying and pushing boundaries, seeing where we can take the next step into our, you know, discovery of, of what comes next. Okay. So with you a hundred percent and the Holzer files, I thought was that that was an, what was really unique about that was you had kind of a horizon line against what you were going to, how you were going to measure your success. You were, right. you were doing that kind of a reinvestigation. I think that kind of stuff works beautifully. So mm-hmm. what was it? What were the stories in Butte, Montana, that the sheriff and the mayor felt were worthy of reaching out to a team like yours to investigate. What what got them the nickname of the Devil's Porch in the first place, Dave? Okay, well, I apologize, but I have to correct you. It's the ghosts of Devil's Perch. Perch. I said I said porch. You know why? Because I played uh, CCR. I played uh, uh, looking out my back door. Yeah. <laughs> so porch got in my head. Perch, of no, course. No, I, meant I just to say have that. this image of the devil standing uh, on his porch, uh, shaking his fist at me, <laughs> and telling me to get off his lawn. <laughs> That's uh, about right. It comes from, uh, it's kind of an old throwaway line about the fact that uh, they were mining so much in the town of Butte that uh, they dug so deep that the devil was sitting on the perch now looking down yeah, at funny. them as they were doing their work. Yeah. Um, it was also a town. It was it was a crazy Wild West kind of town to live in. So uh, the devil had a good view of everything that was unfolding in that town. Yeah. yeah. What what was going on that was right. driving them to to seek help? Well, you know, they were having um, police being called to houses because there was, uh, you know, an intruder scene in the house. Really? Really? Doors and windows are closed and locked from the inside. They'd go through the entire place and find nothing, only to get a call back an hour later that somebody else in the family had seen another figure moving through the house. Wow. That's, that's an example. I mean, even in places like the town hall, uh, you know, the, the center of their government, people have had weird experiences and have, have reported it. So, you know, when you've got a, a town that's built on the blood, sweat, and tears of so many souls, and many of those souls were forgotten at the time. Really, the only people that are remembered are the, you know, the, the Copper Kings, the people that right. rose to prominence. Right. So I think a lot of these spirits just want to be heard. And hmm. that's what I love about doing a show like this is we did it with Holzer Files, was we have a true love for the, for the history, getting the history right and understanding right. what was going on in these places at this time, and then trying to give voice to the spirits that were lost and and. Yeah, I think it's a great way to package history. I almost wish that schools would teach history this way. I would have learned so much more right. growing up, having these fascinating stories of ghosts tied to them. And uh, that's that's just been a big part of, of what we do in this, in that they saw the way that we we show love and respect for the history of the town. We understand the importance for the people that live there. And they're right now in the middle of a giant restoration. They're really sprucing the place up. And you know, you've heard the the theories all along. When you start to, you know, move things and remodel, sometimes it stirs up energy. Right. And yeah. I think that you know, right now they're they're sinking shovels and and uh, backhoes into new things every day, digging stuff up, moving stuff right. around, refurbishing. And I think you know, the the spirit of of Old Town Butte doesn't want to be buried and forgotten. 
my wife and I have renovated a few homes, and there's a rule on that that if you you know you, you take very seriously when you have to crack a wall, not right. because you're. Not, my first thought is not, oh, I'm going to let the ghosts out, but it's because. Right. You crack that wall, you find out you got lead pipes, you've got asbestos in there, you've got right. some things are better left alone a little bit. Um, yeah. So, but that's but then why wouldn't somebody just say, okay, really cool new western town investigated, uh, you know it it'll it makes for great television the new series Ghosts of Devil's Perch, uh, can't wait to watch it. But really, this is a tourism play. And they're just trying to create new interest in a forgotten town. Why would they be wrong? Why would somebody be wrong in thinking that? Uh, I can't say that they necessarily would. I mean, the fact is that there's uh, lifeblood coming into this. But then that's a that's a double-edged sword. When you're gambling on building a new community and you're right. gambling on bringing people in, but then you're exposing this kind of underbelly of – things that have gone on there and things that are continuing to go on there and the spiritual element that's everywhere. And Ian, it's fascinating because I am a skeptical believer and I know people have a hard time no, I get it. terms with that, but I've seen things. It doesn't mean I believe everything and not everything I've seen. And there are times that after standing back and taking a bigger look at the picture, it falls into place and I understand what the experience really was or meant. And during one of the episodes I had, uh, um, a medical issue that put you, me in the hospital. No, no. Why didn't you call your buddy? What happened? Yeah, well, because we were under tight wraps at the time. So I okay. went in, and what's funny is they got wind that, you know, I was one of the ghost guys in town. And all of a sudden, here you've got doctors and nurses coming in. Right. And they're like, I got to tell you about this. And they're oh, interesting. ghost stories about places they grew up, places they visit, and right. in their own hospital. Right. Yeah. Hospitals are really like it, it, there is one of the it's even a, a vibe in a thriving hospital. Um, right. So it's not you don't have to f- go find some abandoned hospital in the middle of the north with like creepy exposed brick and moss and whatever. Right. Even just being in certain corridors in hospitals, you do wonder, like, if you could see w- who is sitting on those gurneys still up against the wall, uh, what they would be having to say. And uh, I often think that when I walk down certain you know, hallways in hospitals, it's like, what stories are, are lingering here to be told? Right. And, and what spirits are staying there to, you know, try to reach out? And, you know, we're finding out more and more things all the time. And, you know, you brought up earlier, well, you know, this is theorized. Why can't we prove it? We can't do this. We can't do that. We're still in in the infancy, I think, of truly even understanding what death is. And we're getting to a point where I think science is starting to take a bigger understanding of this. Yeah. And I don't want to speak out of line, but there are a few people I know in the paranormal field that are engineers that have built right. specific pieces of equipment that have had three-letter government agencies contact them after the fact and buy some of their equipment. They won't really? tell them what for. They won't tell them what they're doing with it, but they've asked for the software. They've asked for the hardware. And these guys that I know that are doing this have, have politely turned it over because you don't want to make the three-letter agencies mad. But, and, they, but did they have to turn it over without a check? They just handed it off? No, they were paid as though they okay, were good. buying the equipment. They okay, were fine. very good about it. Diligent right. had the check cut to him, but they right. it wasn't they weren't coming in and saying, Give us all this. They wanted to understand yeah. what was going on. And yeah. <laughs> so um <laughs> I well, so again, we're talking with uh, uh, our old friend Dave Schrader. The new series is Ghosts of Devil's Perch. Um, so, how many episodes in the series? There are eight episodes that begin airing on August twenty first. They run through the middle of what Travel Channel and Discovery Plus call right. Ghost Tober. So we'll be running through there, okay. and they are. Air- this is interesting because they're airing it on Travel Channel and dropping it on the Discovery Plus app oh, good. at the same time. Oh, and good. for your listeners that are overseas in the U.K., it begins airing on August 27th. And uh, in Canada, I think it's like August 30th, and Australia in October sometimes. So they are, they're making this available worldwide pretty quickly. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy that they're going to be able to show this and, and share this. And, and I'm proud of the team that I was a part of and the families that we were able to help. Um, right. 
and the businesses and the fact that they looked at us and respected what we did and the answers we gave them um, or, or tried to give them during the filming right. of the series. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. If I had my life to live over again, I would be the costume designer for um, these investigations. I, I've been or I've driven around Montana a little bit. I love Montana. And there, there's a kind of desolation to Montana that I think – Mm, much like maybe early American pioneers, you be, it, it, the the atmosphere of the towns, the that foreboding sky when storms come in, the lack you could you can you can drive for miles and not see a sign of life. Right. I think I think that all adds to the the mystery, a sense of that there's something else going on that we can't see. Well, I, I can't wait for you to watch a series and realize that we uncover that the entire town is just being haunted by evil Knievel. Uh, <laughs> <too much> of- <laughs> that that would be cool, though, honestly. Yeah. So oh, trust it, me, the nerd in me stopped there the first day in town. I went right to Evil Knievel's <laughs> grave and and uh, spent some time there. Hey. Uh, fascinating guy, weird stories. And yeah. People still talk about him like uh, like he's Elvis in that town, and others well, talk about him like he's Tony Soprano. So well, I. I'm an hour away from uh, Topeka where they had the Evil Knievel Museum. So stop yeah. by. So d- after this, then, I mean, do you have – this is just a maybe kind of a meta question, but have you already had other towns reach out to you that say, we need what you're doing for Butte um, and the Devil's Perch. We need you to do that for us because we got to understand what is so quirky about this town that freaks people out all the time. Well, I, you know, again, I'm not in the production side of things. We were just asked to be a part of the cast because the other cast from Ghosts of Morgan City had moved on to other things. Ghosts of Shepherdstown had moved on, and Cindy and I had left uh, the, the um, Holzer File series, and they put us together to, to go into here. Uh, I believe that they had had other cities that had asked, and personally, our team would like to go back to Butte. I think that even though we got some mm. answers, I still think there's – there's some stuff going on in Butte I'd like to get a deeper look at. And our, our right. historian, Ian, you will love him, and I've got to get you together with him, Chris Fisk. Yeah, yeah. He runs the Spooks and Spirits tours there. In oh, Butte. cool. He is the history teacher at I love high that. school. He does yeah. all of these amazing things, but his passion and love for the history is second to none, and he is yeah. so good. But he knows so much more, and there are so many other cool little secrets and aspects of this town that I think that uh, I would love to get back and at least do another season before we move on to another town. But if, if we're needed and, and right. uh, the people want to see us, I'd love to come back. Do you, do you encounter anything outside of the traditional, you know, uh, Easterner coming from Boston to find their fortune in Butte kind of story? Were there local stories of indigenous people that were intertwined in the history of Butte? There are peoples from all around the world that came there that uh that we definitely bump into their stories and oh, cool. try to tell their tales so i i'm not allowed to give too much away but yeah you'll you'll see that we definitely uh do dive into <clears throat> excuse me many different varieties of of personalities and lifestyles and and peoples that have lived there before during and after the boon so it's yeah. pretty it's pretty amazing to really see this because it's like this amazing little cross section of America that just all exploded at one time and so much goes on there there's such rich history um but certainly the natives have got a uh, the, the indigenous people and native americans have got a different concept and a way of looking at death as well yep. and you know we certainly bump into some of that and and then you've got all of these uh you know, explorers from around the world that were coming here to make their riches that come with their own belief systems and their own theories and their own. And, and do we create these beings, these okay. spiritual entities because uh, of our belief systems? It's, it's fascinating. The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners, and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.